Hi, hello, uh, and thanks for being here. And yes, today I want to present to you our recent work that uh, was recently put on the archive last week uh, about uh, essentially, yes, multi-parameter <clears throat> quantum channel estimation, and yes, with a particular focus on this issue of probing compatibility. And uh, okay, the outline of my talk uh, is the following. And first, I will outline the difference between state estimation and quantum channel estimation and the different uh, uh, challenges of the two tasks. And then I will uh, present some general uh, notions of incompatibility in these multi-parameter uh, channel estimation problems. Uh, then finally, I will uh, present our main technical contribution, which is some a new class of uh, multi-parameter purification-based uh, bounds. And then I will uh, present some application of these bounds to quantum metrology problems and, and uh, to uh, channel discrimination, and in particular, uh, with a particular application to uh, noisy Grover uh, search. Uh, okay, so let's start from <clears throat> quantum state estimation. Uh, most of us are familiar with this topic, and uh, we have a quantum parametric statistical model, which is a parametric family of uh, density matrices. And uh, for the rest of the talk, I will only consider uh, matrices, so finite dimensional uh, Hilbert space uh, for, the, for the quantum system. And essentially, we have a vector of unknown parameters, and that uh, we want to, uh, and we want to uh, estimate the, the true value of these parameters. And this is a state estimation problem because, essentially, uh, identifying the true parameters means identifying the true state. And of course, the the the, the quantum part of the problem is the fact that we are we are free to choose the best measurement for this task. And now uh, I write best, I say best, but um, in general, uh, okay, I will then discuss what, what optimality means for this kind of multi-parameter problems. And of course, after measurement, uh, we just have a classical estimation problem, a classical statistical model, and uh, we can choose um, some estimators for these parameters. And in particular, we focus on this class of uh, locally unbiased estimators, uh, and uh, uh, okay, this is a class that it's meaningful. Okay, it means that they are unbiased, so they give on average the the, the true value only in a neighborhood of the true of the true value. And uh, okay, this is a class of estimators that it's uh, common to choose uh, to 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 somehow get some asymptotic results, meaning that you need to have a lot of prior information to use such estimators. And uh, and then of course uh, the um, the quantity that uh, quantifies the precision of the estimation of these parameters is the covariance matrix, uh, which I define here. Uh, can you see my pointer? Yes. 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 Ah, OK, thanks. OK, the covariance matrix that you see here. And of course, there is the well-known uh, quantum Kramer-Rau bound uh, uh, derived by Hellstrom that says that uh, this covariance matrix is lower bounded by the inverse uh, quantum Fisher information matrix which is defined, I guess, probably most of us uh, already know this, is defined in terms of the symmetric logarithmic derivatives. And now the first kind of incompatibility is already present because uh, here this matrix bound is not always attainable. And this is uh, a, a consequence of measurement incompatibility, which is essentially the fact that these operators L for different parameters might not be commuting. Uh, okay, so now let's move to um, channel estimation. And now, instead of a parametric family of states, we have a parametric family of quantum channels. So uh, formally, uh, completely positive trips preserving maps. Now, there is an additional degree of freedom, which is the fact that we can choose the best probe state. And of course, af after fixing the probe state, we just have a state estimation problem. And of course, measurement incompatibility is still there. But the, the interesting uh, quantum aspect of this problem of channel estimation uh, arises where we can use the channel many times, n times. And in particular, uh, we can devise some uh, clever strategies for this problem. And here in this picture, I present the most general strategy allowed by quantum mechanics which is uh, adding uh, additionary ancillary systems, uh, preparing some uh, 
large entangled probe state between the system and the ancillas, and then after each channel application, applying some control unitary operation. And uh, this is the most general strategy, and this can um, simulate a parallel strategy where all the uh, channels are used in parallel, and uh, I, I use a big entangled uh, probe state, and also adaptive strategies where, uh, depending on some, some intermediate measurement, I apply unitaries uh, that depends on the results, etc. So uh, this will be our main uh, <clears throat> focus, to bound the, um, the performance of this kind of strategy. Okay, but now uh, let me go back to the issue of optimality that I, that I uh, already mentioned. And the, I always like to use this slide to show that uh, it's not a necessarily quantum problem. Uh, because even classically, if I want to estimate the same parameters, but I have different experiments. And for us in the quantum setting, different experiments means choosing a different probe state or even uh, already at the um, state estimation level, choosing a different measurement. I end up with uh, different uh, statistical models. And in general, uh, I cannot always compare like uh, the Fisher, the classical or even quantum uh, Fisher matrices uh, of, of different quantum or classical models. And therefore I need to choose some criterion for optimality. And, and uh, this is the topic studied classically in the, in the field of optimal design of experiments. But a common choice that we will make is to use this quantity that we call uh, total variance, which is just the trace of the covariance matrix weighted by, uh, multiplied by some uh, positive cost uh, or weight matrix W. Now, uh, for this figure of merit, we can derive some lower bounds. And uh, first we can apply the uh, quantum camera bound and then, which is a matrix inequality, but taking the trace, we can derive this inequality. And here I'm working in the eigen uh, basis of this matrix W. And uh, <clears throat> these um, Wx, uh, small Wx, are the eigen values of this, um, of this weight matrix. Then we can use other algebraic inequalities, uh, Cauchy's force, and in the end, we end up with this quantity on the right. And here, uh, uh, it's important to notice that at the denominator, we have uh, essentially a, a weighted sum of the diagonal elements of the QFI matrix. And this will be essentially our main figure of merit in the following. And we give it a name and we call it total QFI. And we define it in general for arbitrary weights. And uh, now it's important to, to realize that this quantity is essentially just a sum of single parameter quantum Fisher informations. Uh, for channels that act on the on the same uh, probe state, and this holds even if in a setting where we are, we don't have one channel and multiple parameters, but even in a setting in a scenario where we have different channels, and uh, in particular in this case uh, we have a task that we have, we have called random quantum sensing, and uh, here these um, weights Q are essentially a probability. Uh, up to some normalization, of course. And here the task is the following. We have this ensemble of channels and uh, basically each of these channels can encode this parameter theta in, in a different way, but we need to optimize a strategy. So a probe state or more generally uh, a full strategy with uh, more uses of the channel without knowing the particular channel that will be extracted when the protocol is run, but only knowing the ensemble. So the probabilities and the channels. However, at, at finally, at the measurement stage, the particular value X that is extracted is known. So in this scenario, this quantity here, the total QFI, is exactly a quantifier of the best achievable pre precision on this parameter uh, theta. And this is a bit abstract, but uh, it's important to keep in mind because all the bounds that I will derive are valid also in this, uh, in this uh, setting, not just in the mm, multi-parameter setting. But now, finally, going back to the, um, to the um, proper multi-parameter channel estimation setting, so a single channel and multiple parameters, in this paper by Rafal uh, and others, uh, they defined three conditions for compatibility. And here I restate them in, uh, restate them in the negative, call, calling them incompatibility. So if there is no single probe state that allows for optimal sensitivity for, for a parameter, then we say that there is probe incompatibility. If there exists no single measurement to extract 
optimally the information about all parameters, then we have measurement incompatibility. And finally, we have these, uh, the fact that the estimated values might be uh, statistically correlated. And these statistical correlation basically uh, are uh, detrimental for the precision of uh, uh, each individual estimate. And this is embodied at the, uh, in the fact that the Fisher information matrix might have off diagonal elements. So when I take the inverse, uh, the, inver the inverse matrix, the diagonal elements will be larger. In the following, we will disregard essentially measurement incompatibility because, okay, we know that asymptotically, it, asymptotically it is at most a factor two, and, and we use this as a reason to focus just on the QFI. Okay, so uh, the first thing that we present in the paper is a measure for probing compatibility. And this is a bit maybe, okay, it's a bit dense, so let's unpack it. In the denominator, we have just uh, the, the cost, essentially, for uh, multi-parameter estimation with a single probe state uh, in terms of the, quantum, of the inverse quantum fission information matrix. While at the denominator, we have uh, the sum of single parameter bounds, but where the single parameter bounds if, is for the estimation, essentially, of a linear combination of parameters, which is determined by this vector bold phase uh, Wx. Uh, and this is uh, what is called a nuisance uh, bound because essentially it means that we, it's a single parameter problem because we, we want to estimate only this linear combination of parameters, but all the, the other parameters are treated as uh, nuisance parameters. So we don't assume to perfectly know them. And the connection between the numerator and the denominator is uh, in the fact that this weight matrix W is decomposed in the following way. And now these vectors are not necessarily orthogonal. And finally, we maximize over this vector in a, in a way that, oh, sorry, in a way that uh, we, we put ourselves in the worst case scenario for, for this uh, single probe state. And uh, this quantity has some nice properties. It is invariant under the parameterizations, and it takes into account both one and three. Uh, but, uh, okay, and also it's one when there is mm, no incompatibility, but it's very hard to evaluate. So we won't really use this, but I wanted to present it to you because maybe somebody has some ideas and, and okay, this is something that we left open, how to evaluate this quantity for practical problems. But on the other hand, we defined a more approachable quantity, which depends on a particular parameterization, so there is no maximization over W. And uh, this quantity is defined, is essentially the total QFI that I have introduced before, where the weights are just the best, um, the best precision for single parameter problems. And now here, these are truly single parameter problems, uh, not nuisance uh, as before here. And uh, of course, then I need to take the inverse and rescale by a factor P, but, but essentially this is just obtained in terms of this total QFI that I have introduced before. And uh, this quantity takes only into account uh, the, the incompatibility, the, the, the definition one, I mean, the aspect one of incompatibility, because it doesn't take into account uh, the fact that there might be correlations because there is no inversion of the QFI. And uh, for this reason, this makes sense also for random sensing. So when there, we have different channels. And this uh, measure takes values in the, between one and P for minimal and maximal incompatibility. And finally, uh, for a natural parameterization, this is also a, a, a lower bound for the previous measure, measure of incompatibility. And okay, now I, I won't define what a natural parameterization is, but okay, uh, in the end, for the example, we will mostly focus on this, on this uh, quantity. So uh, <clears throat> let, let's... Um, Let's start uh, to derive some bounds now. And uh, before starting, I just want to mention that, of course, one could use existing, uh, existing single parameter bounds. So we want to bound this quantity on a, uh, on a single probe state, so the sum of uh, QFI, uh, but uh, acting with a single probe state. But if we use the single parameter bounds for, for each parameter in this way, we are not taking into account probing compatibility. So we need to do be better than this. And <clears throat> the way to do this is to uh, generalize, I mean, to extend the, the result of Fujiwara and Imai for single parameters. 
And okay, this slide is a bit dense, so and now we'll go through it. But if you are familiar with the single parameter bounds, this is not really surprising. Essentially, in the single parameter case, there is no summation here. And now I have a summation inside this operator norm. So the, the total QFI of the channel is upper bounded by this operator norm, which is the, the uh, maximal singular value of this operator. And for each parameter, we have uh, um, an operator alpha x, which, which is the sum of the product of uh, Krauss operator of the derivatives of Krauss operators, uh, where each derivative is actually shifted by this um, Hermitian matrix H. Here, bold phase K is a column of uh, Krauss operators, which in principle could be different because as I said before, for random sensing, this could be different channels. And this Hermitian matrix H essentially reshuffles uh, the uh, Krauss operators. And this optimization is essentially an optimization over different Krauss representation of the channels. This bound is actually attainable by considering uh, an extended channel. So the optimal state might be um, entangled, entangled with some ancillary uh, degrees of freedom. But OK, this is uh, a semi-definite program, can be computed as, as a semi-definite program. It's a trivial extension of the single parameter result. And OK, this is maybe not very surprising. But now, the, <clears throat> the, more, the more advanced result is that we can generalize these uh, to uh, the most general strategy for n uses of the channel. And here, in principle, we can optimize over the probe state, but also on, over these control operations. So now this bound is uh, okay, quite complicated, but I, I, I'm, I'm not interested in the particular form of this, uh, of this quadratic term in N, but I'm interested just to, um, to notice that this quadratic term that represents Eisenberg scaling uh, depends on these operators beta x that are uh, now linear in, the, in these matrices H. This is just an extension again of, uh, of previous single parameter results. And we also have a tighter bound for parallel strategy, which uh, differs only in this uh, quadratic Eisenberg limited, uh, I mean, in this quadratic part that, that uh, uh, if, if um, it, this remains asymptotically, we can have uh, Eisenberg scaling. But uh, this won't be uh, very important for us because we focus on channels for which we can find some uh, choice of matrices H such that these operators are X for all, for all uh, are zero for all X. This means that asymptotically we will have a standard quantum limit scaling. And this bound is again a semi-definite program because we are just adding linear constraints, but uh, apart from the linear constraints is identical to the single use bound. And of course, this will be larger than the single use bound because we have uh, additional constraints. Uh, and as I, as I mentioned before, this is the same for parallel and adaptive strategies. And uh, finally, it's important to mention that for single parameters, so when there is no summation and just one X, this bound is uh, attainable with approximate error correction. But unfortunately, unfortunately we, we, we don't know yet about the, the, the multi-parameter version. So a couple of comments on this bound. In principle, uh, if one uh, chooses some, some set uh, of matrices HX that satisfies these constraints beta X equal to zero for all X, but are not necessarily optimal, one can, ob can, obtain, can obtain other upper bounds. And in particular, uh, in this recent paper, uh, uh, they derived an, a bound based on uh, RLD, so right logarithmic derivatives, uh, which can be written in terms of the choi jamiokowski matrix. And OK, the bound is this one. So it's, it's nice because it's particularly simple, can be expressed just in terms of derivatives of the choi jamiokowski matrix of the channel. But uh, analog analogously to the single parameter case, this is suboptimal because it's not necessarily the optimal matrix. And in particular, in, uh, in this multi-parameter case, it's even worse than in the single parameter case because this bound, since it's suboptimal, does not necessarily capture probing compatibility uh, as, as well as our optimal bound. Uh, now, I also mentioned that finally, that uh, this uh, bound can also be generalized to um, Markovian dynamics with a Lindblad master equation. And here, the resource becomes the total sensing time instead of the number of application of the channel. 
uh, and this is again uh, we provide uh, this in the paper but it's it's uh, again similar to the single parameter case uh, in, of this paper so finally i can go back again to the <clears throat> problem compatibility measure and uh, and um, tell you how i will uh, evaluate it for uh, for our problems uh, practical problems and for a single use of the channel actually the extended channel is the one that attains the bound it's just uh, like this so i just put as weights this uh, one over these optimal uh, bounds for a sing for each single parameter and of course i can also define an asymptotic measure by using these asymptotic sql bounds of course this is meaningful for channels for which uh, i have sql uh, scaling so standard quantum limit scaling uh, and uh, this, uh, in general, will be only a lower bound because we don't know if the multi-parameter bound is attainable, but but it will be a meaningful uh, lower bound. Okay, so before moving to the examples, I need uh, one more. I need to tell you one more thing, which is the following. So far, I have considered uh, essentially uh, different channels. Uh, for, I mean different purifications for each parameter because uh, the, se the setting that I was working in could work also for uh, different channels. So in principle, I could choose different purifications for each parameter. But now uh, I want to show that if we work in the truly multi-parameter uh, scenario, so one channel, uh, only one channel, we can choose a unique purification. And the formal way of showing this is the following, is, is, that, uh, is to show that the QFI matrix of a, a mixed quantum state is the minimal QFI matrix of its purifications. And it can also be expressed uh, in terms of the um, gram matrix of uh, the derivatives uh, of the purification. And uh, I want to present a, a sketch of the proof, this fact, because uh, it's, uh, it's quite simple. And it's important to notice that this is a now a matrix valued multi, uh, minimization, not a scalar one. And this is a well-defined problem because if we define the QFI of a pure state, we can define it, we can um, write it compactly in this way. Uh, we can see that uh, um, basically by subtracting this uh, matrix, which is always a positive semi-definite matrix, we have this inequality. So this will always be larger than the full uh, QFI matrix in general. And uh, moreover, we can show that uh, since um, partial tracing that is, is the operation that goes from this state to the mixed state is a CPTP map, we have a monotonicity property. And so we have this matrix inequality. So essentially, we just need to show that uh, if there is a matrix of this form that attains this bound, then uh, we have proven our statement. And the, the trick to do this is to notice that uh, by starting from some reference purification, we can obtain all purification by acting with a unitary on the ancillary, on the like environmental degrees of freedom. And in particular, we can restrict uh, our unitary acting on the degrees of freedom to this form, which is essentially uh, um, some kind of uh, expansion around the true value of the parameter. And essentially, in this way, we can see that uh, <clears throat> there are uh, independent uh, Hamiltonians, so independent uh, matrices H that appear in this in this uh, unitary, and we can optimize over each uh, each of these matrices independently. And in this way, we can use single parameter results that says that there exists an optimal purification that satisfies these uh, uh, this property here. And with this property, we can show that this matrix is equal to these. And, and so we have proven uh, our, uh, our statement where, okay, this is the SLD of the original mixed state. So uh, now let's move to some applications of these bounds. Uh, and one, <clears throat> one very paradigmatic application is uh, the case in which we are encoding unitary parameters, uh, so uh, in this way, where uh, these G are the generators. And in particular, it's easier uh, to work uh, at the true value zero for all parameters. 
And then uh, no, some noise acts after the encoding. So the total uh, <clears throat> chaos operators of the channel, uh, which I, I are uh, indicated with some prime, are just uh, the unitary multiplied by the chaos operator of the noise only. With these assumptions, the, the, the SQL bound, the asymptotic bound becomes simpler and uh, uh, it's just uh, as just this form. And essentially, uh, yes, here we have just uh, the weighted sum of all these uh, matrices uh, of the square of these matrices H that, uh, that enters the bound. So it's, it's, it's uh, simpler to obtain analytical results. So now let's consider a particular problem, which is, uh, I would say, paradigmatic. And it is, this is the problem of estimating the generators of a UD uh, transformation. Uh, so the generators are uh, diagonal, of diagonal uh, real, and uh, of diagonal imaginary. And in total, we have D squared parameters. Now, as a truly uh, multi-parameter problem, this would be ill-defined because we cannot um, estimate all D squared parameters, but um, for our figures of merit, for the total QFI, uh, this is uh, not a problem because I, I'm just considering the sum of the diagonal elements. But uh, I choose this for, let's say, for simplicity of the calculations. And uh, essentially, having one parameter more or less won't change uh, the scaling in P, which is the, 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 the thing that I'm interested in. So, uh, OK, this is just a justification for choosing this parameterization instead of for example, uh, the generalized uh, Gelman matrices, uh, which are more standard uh, SUD generators. Okay, so these are the generators and this is the noise that I'm choosing. And this is uh, erasure noise. And it means that with some probability eta, which represents a transmissivity, my state is, uh, let's say, uh, transmitted perfectly. And with some probability one over eta, each level can decay into some uh, external vacuum state. For this reason, there is one additional dimension in, uh, in the output Hilbert space. So these are rectangular cross operators. Uh, and yes, and there is D plus one of them. <clears throat> With this choice of noise and generators, uh, we can find the these results, and which are particularly simple for the symmetry of the problem. And essentially, the asymptotic bound is just a rescaling by this factor um, of the noiseless, um, noiseless bounds. And in particular, we see that uh, the, the, the multi-parameter result is the sum of the results for the sub-models of the, of the three diagonal, uh, of diagonal real and of diagonal imaginary. And uh, <clears throat> since the, uh, the results, uh, the bounds for single parameter estimation are just equal to this multiplicative factor for all of these parameters, uh, we see that the, the incompatibility uh, is not affected by, by, by noise, essentially. It, it remains the same in the noiseless and in the noisy case. And in, in particular, this incompatibility parameter that we have defined scales as square root of p of the total number of parameters. And so we have some kind of intermediate incompatibility for this problem. Now, OK, this problem was a bit uh, abstract. And now let's move to a more physically motivated problem, which is uh, a multi-phase estimation in a lossy multi-arm interferometer. Now, um, I, I consider p arms on which uh, uh, p different phases are imprinted, and then one additional reference arm. And on all these arms, there is a loss uh, with, tra with um, transmissivity eta, and it's equal on all arms. And uh, at the single photon level, the channel experienced by a single photon is essentially a QDIT channel. And essentially, we are just restricting to the same model. I mean, we have the same model we had before, but just restricting to, um, to diagonal generators. Uh, with the only difference that now I'm, I'm focusing on, uh, not on all the uh, parameters, the diagonal generators as I was doing here, but uh, to D, D minus one. So um, the dimension is, uh, is larger. And uh, for this problem, uh, using the bounds that I've presented at, at the beginning uh, on, the total, uh, on the total variance, 
we can derive uh, these bounds uh, for the total variance on these uh, parameters. And in particular, I want to focus on this quantity on the right, because this quantity is exactly the same quantity that is attained if I estimate each phase separately in the limit of a large number of uh, uses of the channel and of a large number of phases, and as was uh, presented in this paper. For this problem, thus, uh, we see that uh, there is no advantage of estimating parameters uh, simultaneously. And this, uh, in other words, can also be seen from these uh, asymptotic uh, incompatibility parameters, which scales linearly with the number of parameters. So essentially, we have maximal incompatibility for this problem. Now uh, we can move to <clears throat> another um, paradigmatic problem, which is simultaneous estimation of phase and loss in a, in a um, two-arm interferometer. Now each uh, single photon can be represented as, uh, as represented as a qubit. And uh, on the same arm, we have a phase and, and a loss. And the qubit channel is uh, essentially, um, um, again, an erasure channel, but now only, only for a qubit. And uh, the Krauss operators are these ones. And uh, <clears throat> now for, single, for a single use of the channel, so for a single photon, we have uh, incompatibility because uh, this is quite intuitive because uh, the optimal ways to estimate this parameter, this transmissivity parameter, is to send a single photon on this arm of the interferometer. But of course, with a single photon, we cannot estimate the phase. So um, we see that we need to sacrifice some uh, information on this parameter to get some information on this one. And uh, this can be seen at the level of the multi-parameter bound because the multi-parameter bound on both parameters is equal to the single parameter bound uh, of this parameter, of this transmissivity parameter. And if we compute the, the, uh, the single use incompatibility measure that I defined previously, we see that, okay, it's, uh, it's a complicated function of eta, but it's not, uh, it's not one. Yeah. Um, but on the other hand, if we go to the asymptotic limit, we see that there is no incompatibility and uh, uh, the multi-parameter bound is just the sum of the two single parameter bounds. Um, and uh, accordingly, the, <clears throat> the, multi the asymptotic incompatibility parameter is just equal to one. The problem is that, uh, I mean, the problem, uh, we don't know if this, uh, if this bound is actually attainable because for this problem, there is also, in general, measurement incompatibility. Uh, OK, so our last metrological example is very similar to, to phase uh, and loss, but uh, we just choose a different um, the phasing channel on this arm. And oh, sorry. And here, essentially, we have a phase that is imprinted, but there is also some phase diffusion in this arm of the interferometer. And the cross operators for this qubit channel are the following. It's just a dephasing, uh, dephasing channel, qubit dephasing channel. And now for this problem, there is no incompatibility uh, either at the single use level or at the asymptotic uh, level because the, the multi-parameter bound is always the sum of the two single parameter bounds and both incompatibility parameters are one as I show here. Uh, this is consistent with previous works but it's also interesting to notice that uh, for uh, n equal to, uh, incompatibility reappears, and it is only asymptotically that this incompatibility disappears. So uh, in a way, we are confirming these previous results in a, in a, in a like uh, more rigorous asymptotic uh, fashion. And to some extent, uh, we might uh, take some inspiration from this to say that maybe even for this previous problem, this bound might be attainable. Okay, so uh, now I can <clears throat> tell you about the last uh, application of our bounds. And this is a completely, I mean, not completely, but it's a very different setting. And uh, um, I will present it here in a simplified way, but in the paper, I give, uh, we give a more uh, detailed description of, of this application. And so now essentially we have an ensemble of channels, of different channels. And we ask, what is the minimal number of channel application to perfectly discriminate 
uh, between this channel, assuming the most general adaptive strategy. So uh, we need to define the problem mathematically and uh, perfect discrimination can happen when the final states after n applications of the channel uh, have reached a fidelity uh, zero between, I mean, all the final states for all channels have reached a fidelity zero. But I will express this fidelity in terms of the Burris, uh, Burris angle. So this is the fidelity that we all know. And the Burris angle is just the arc cosine. And in terms of this Burris angle, uh, we can therefore fix a uh, fix, uh, fixed um, uh, Burris angle between all final states. And in particular, here, the fidelity would be zero if this uh, uh, angle is uh, pi, pi half, but I keep a generic value for, for, for simplicity, uh, which means may that maybe uh, the final state will be not perfectly uh, distingu distinguishable, but, but uh, almost for a, for, a, for a value close to pi half. Now, uh, using our bound, we can derive the following, uh, the following uh, inequality for the minimal uh, number of uses. For channels for which uh, the conditions beta x equal to zero are satisfied for, uh, for, all, for all x. And uh, okay, this bound here as this uh, delta, this fixed uh, <clears throat> virus angle here at the denominator and it's, uh, it, it scales linearly here in, with the number of channels, P. And at the denominator, there is a quantity that I need to explain more in details. But these quantities, uh, essentially, um, finding how this quantity uh, scales with the number of parameters uh, will determine uh, how the number of uses scales with the, with the number of uh, channels. And here, this B is exactly our asymptotic bound, but I need to explain you uh, about which parameters. So uh, let, me, let me try to explain this with, with, the, with a scheme. This is a bit heavy, so let me unpack it. So these here on the right are the, uh, the original channels that we are starting, starting with. And we introduce some reference channel that we call uh, Z, um, e zero, and this this reference channel is also applied n times using the same uh, control strategy that we are using to to discriminate between the channels, and <clears throat> and then we introduce a particular parameterizations parameterization such that uh, when uh, when the channel when, when this parameterization is fully encoded encoded, we obtain the original channels in this way. And then uh, we, can, we can use some inequalities. So first, we can see that the, the, the sum of the distance uh, of the Buras angle between uh, these states and the, and the reference uh, and the state obtained from the reference channel is larger than this quantity here because of triangle inequality and because we have fixed these, uh, all these uh, distances between these, all these uh, states to be equal to this, uh, to this delta that we fixed before. Then we can, <clears throat> we can bound this sum by using the fact that the Buer's angle represent uh, a geodesic. So, for each parameterization, integrating uh, this, this uh, square root of the QFI will give an upper bound to this. And in particular, we sum it for, for all the parameters. And then we can use another inequality here to essentially obtain something in which we have the sum of QFI elements. And then here, finally, we can use our, our, um, our metrological bounds that here we have derived for. So uh, now, combining these with these, we can derive the, the inequality that I've presented before. So it, it is a bit complicated, but, but there are some situations in which there is uh, a natural uh, reference channel. And now I will present just very quickly one example, which is <clears throat> continuous time Grover search. 
this problem is essentially uh, a discrimination problem among uh, the Oracle Hamiltonians. And the Oracle Hamiltonians are, are um, at this form, so they are equivalent to the diagonal generators that I've presented uh, before. And essentially, when there is no noise, we just have a unitary evolution uh, with some frequency, some frequency omega, and um, for an interrogation time uh, tau. And Farin and Gutmann have shown that it is possible to, to discriminate perfectly between these Hamiltonians in a time that scales uh, quadratically with the number of, uh, of Oracle Hamiltonians, so the number of uh, database elements, if you want. And um, now, the question which these um, Oracle Hamiltonians, uh, these oracles are not uh, noiseless, but they are noisy. And there is in particular some um, uniform QD to the phasing, which means applying this channel where <clears throat> all the off-diagonal elements of the, of the density matrix are, are basically decreased by a factor eta that uh, depends exponentially, that decays exponentially uh, with the dancing time because it's Markovian noise. And uh, essentially, in this setting, we, we can take the continuous limit of this previous result that I've shown here, and we can derive the following bound, and which is a bound that says that the total runtime must scale linearly with, uh, with the, the number of Oracle Hamiltonian, so with, with the database size. So essentially, we lose the, the advantage that, that we have in the, in the noiseless case. Uh, and this result was conjectured in this previous paper, but uh, using only single parameter bounds, it was not possible to prove it rigorously. So I think with this, I, I'm at the end. I think I should be in time. And uh, to conclude, these, um, uh, these results that I've shown you are somehow the first steps towards a full asymptotic theory of multi-parameter channel estimation. And there is a big open question that is attainability of our, our bounds. And actually for attainability in the multi-parameter setting, uh, all three kinds of incompatibility will need to be tackled simultaneously. But also the attainability in the, <clears throat> in the uh, random sensing scenario. So, so the attainability, uh, without considering, let's say, uh, all, all kinds of incompatibility is, is also an open question. So this will need to be investigated. And finally, we mentioned that the single parameter results have found application to the theory of quantum error correction, as for example, in this recent paper by Rafal. Uh, and we hope that these results will also find application into other fields. And we have tried to, 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 to show the one first of such applications uh, for the Grover problem. OK, this is all. And I thank you for the attention. And uh, I hope you understood a bit. <laughs> it was a bit okay. heavy. Yeah, thanks, Francesco, a lot uh, for the talk. So we have time for questions now. So, I mean, okay, so I think Francesco was a bit quick with some, <laughs> with some topics. So, so I so guess I, now you can ask, yes, Yannick. Yeah, so I, uh, I cannot show the camera. I'm waiting for my vaccination. So I was watching <laughs> not uh, everything, but I w first of all, congratulations, uh, congratulations on the Grover uh, that you closed it just to make sure. So I remember there was this model of I don't know his name. He used the Frobenius norm. This was the ah, M -M. yes, yes. Now I understand you generalize this to this slightly different defacing, no? Because you have yes, yes, indeed. You have this metrology like defacing. So do we know? So do we already know for other channels like I don't know erasure, amplitude dumping, etc., uh, etc. Et Is do you have like now do? Do we have now like a conclusion that Grover cannot work for? Okay, in the paper. Mm -hmm. Okay, because th the tricky thing uh, is that um, okay, I, I I haven't found a way to uh, to prove it for all channels uh, that gives SQL scaling. So this is a, a um, 
like some kind of natural noise model, I would say. But uh, I also show it for a leisure channel because uh, it, it, it's essentially the just uh, an application of the bound that I've derived previously. So for these two noise models, yes. For the for the other noise models, I think I would I would need to do it uh, on a case by case basis. But I think it can be done. But okay, I haven't checked uh, more noise models actually. And you need to do it case by case because you need to run the SDP and then guess some form or? Yes, yes. Essentially, yes. Uh, yes, because essentially, uh, okay, my, my first idea was that maybe uh, for anything of this form, I could prove it. Um, but <clears throat> okay, I haven't been able to show it that it's just uh, that just by by imposing this beta x equal to zero for all x is enough. Uh, and so yes, I need to I need to find some explicit solution such this one for sorry uh, like this one for example for erasure noise and a different one for um, this QD defacing noise. Yes. Okay. Still good. Congrats. Thanks. Thanks. So any other questions? Yeah, so I mean, so I think that especially interesting is this, uh, uh, was also this quantity that Francesco introduced in the beginning and, and mentioned that it's not clear how to compute it, this probe incompatibility. Yes. This fundamental mm -hmm. formula. So I think this is interesting if somebody is is, is interested in this multi-parameter estimation topics to, to think of this quantity because essentially what what Francesco did was to like to 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 have like computable lower bounds yes on, on this on this quantity uh, based on this total quantum Fisher information but but this quantity I mean has something more in it uh, and it's interesting whether it's possible to efficiently Computed, and if there will be something qualitatively new, if you really compute it exactly compared with this lower bounds on on this, based on this total Fisher information. So I think this conceptually, this is still an kind of open problem here. Yes, and yes, the the the, the best properties that. Uh, being invariant under reparameterizations, it should capture some geometrical mm -hmm. property of the channel, which does not depend on the coordinates on the manifold of channels. So I would really be interested to learn more about this quantity. And this is also if you drop the maximization, because I understand in your bound, you don't have the inverses, no? So it's even if I fix some W, we cannot compute it. Right? Yes, yes. Exactly. Yes. Basically, I do to, to get this lower bound. Uh, you need to do two things. You fix a particular W, which fixes a particular purification, and then you need to use some bounds similar to to these reasoning here to go from the inverses to just a sum of um, of uh, diagonal elements. Essentially, yes. So yes, the tricky thing essentially is to take into account, even disregarding this optimization, the tricky thing is to take into account the, the QFI inverse, yes. But on the other hand, I mean, this maximization over Ws may make this quantity more computable because maybe this maximum Ws correspond to some like eigenvectors of this optimal Fisher matrices and then the inverses no, of the matrices will turn to be inverses of yes, the entries. Of eigen, eigenvalues. Yes, yes, yes. So, so then, you know, so the, I think this maximization is important because it gives hope that in the end, the, the result may be simple because we in fact do not need to invert this, ma this non-diagonal matrices after all. But okay, but it's not clear, I mean. Yeah. I need to go. Thanks once more, Francesco, for the talk. And th thank you for, I mean, I mean, I, I used a lot of your results in this, so thank you a lot. Oh, it's yeah, good. Thanks. They were useful to someone. <laughs> thanks, Yannick. Thank you, guys. So any, any other questions?
maybe maybe I have one. Uh, so here you are comparing uh, Fisher. In, I mean, in this problem, in compatibility measure, you are comparing well results obtained with Fisher information, both in nominator and denominator. Yeah. Yes. But well, the true precision is given by the Hollyhock bound. Yes. Yes. If we also take into account compatibility, yes, we would need to use the level mm -hmm. bound for the just for the numerator yes because the denominator uh, uh, yes uh, this is equal to the level bound yes okay so uh, so then uh, here you are well you are you are underestimating this incompatibility in a sense yeah Yes. The total yes. incompatibility. The okay. total incompatibility is underestimated. Yes. Yes. But again, it should be at most a factor two. So okay, we're interested in how this quantity scales with the number of parameters. It shouldn't be uh, too relevant. Yeah. Of course, if you have for a small problems like with two parameters, it becomes very relevant. Of course, a factor two. But mm -hmm. so so okay. So okay. this this point that Francesco is making that this is the factor of two discrepancy is related with the fact that for product states, we know that Holevo is saturable, whereas here we don't have strictly speaking product states, but we are looking at this uh, uh, models where beta is equal to zero. So the optimal uh, Fisher is case linearly. So this means that asymptotically, okay, it can be approximated by some kind of structures where we have products of groups of particles. And that's why we also can claim that whole level bound is saturable. And that's mm -hmm. why this factor of two is, is what we think asymptotically is the biggest discrepancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because in, well, in realistic application, I mean, okay, scaling is one thing, but this factor of two may be important yeah, because if you, for example, think about some signal to noise ratio, then, well, this will give you two times better signal to noise ratio. Yeah? Yes, sure. Okay, so, yeah. so I mean, okay. I mean, in principle, we could we could put Holevo bound in the enumerator, yes. Yes. Yeah, but then it will be probably uncomputable. Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay. It's already yeah. uncomputable. Yes. So yes, for defining it, we we could put. So it maybe anyway. maybe yes, we can we can define it with Holevo bound and then just say that okay, we still look for the lower bound, so it will still be valid. Yes. Yes, yes, I think it's, it's yeah, maybe maybe it's better to define it in the most general way. So it takes into account all three, and then we move to this one that takes into account yes. only one. Yes, probably it's conceptually yeah. better. Yeah, so I think it's a good point that we should maybe in the paper, we can we can we can even pull add this whole, change this enumerator to whole level bound, I guess. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Francesco? Yes, yes, I think it's a good idea. Because then, okay, we can say, okay, this would be the perfect quantity to compute and it would take into account everything. But, okay, first we drop Holevo and then we drop this inverses and, uh, and so on. And we end up with this total Fisher information. So, so, okay, so in a sense, these are just lower bounds, but, but this also shows, I mean, what does it mean to compute this total Fisher information? Okay, that this gives you some lower bound and Okay, if we are able to compute this more exact quantities, it would be great, but I don't mm -hmm. know. 